Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at logistic growth, which is um, a different model than exponential growth and decay. Uh, we know that exponential graphs go through usually the ordered pair 0, 1 and take off like a little rocket. Uh, sometimes if it's a negative exponent, it can come down and be decreasing and have an asymptote of the x-axis. But that's what exponential graphs usually look like. A logistic graph is going to take off like a rocket, like exponential, but it's going to reach some place where it's going to make a little S-curve, and it's going to change its concavity and have a point of inflection. And we're going to find out that it's got a horizontal asymptote up here, and this models population growth when we have limited resources. So this, this limit up here, we're going to call that our limit, and it's going to be a horizontal asymptote to the graph. And we're also going to be interested in whenever this graph has a point of inflection or changes concavity. And that's always going to be limit divided by 2, and we're going to show that down here. So let's just get started. First of all, we want it to be in this, this differential equation form, dp dt equals kp times l minus p. Um, l is going to stand for that limit, and p is just going to be the population, the variable p. So let's take a look at this example. I've got the differential equation here, dp dt equals 3p minus p squared over 6,000, and I want to put it in this form, so I have to factor something out where I just have a p here. So what I'm going to factor out is I'm going to factor out a p over 6,000. So let's see what happens. If I divide out a p from the 3p, that just leaves me with a 3, but what happens if you do 3 divided by 6,000? Um, then you're actually doing, I'm sorry, 3 divided by 1 over 6,000. So you have to flip that over, and that's going to give you an 18,000. 3 divided by 1 6,000 is 18,000. And then if we factor the p over 6,000 out of the second term, we can just get p there. Now, we can just stop and multiply this back through, and we would see that if we multiply back through, this would give me 18,000 p over 6,000, which is our 3p. And then we would get p squared over 6,000. This is our dp dt. Let's find out when this equals zero. One way this would equal zero is if our population was zero, which would make sense if you have no population, you cannot grow. But another way we're going to get zero here is if p equals 18,000. If p equals 18,000, then that makes the second factor here equal to zero, and that's going to be our limit. So if you ever get it in this form right here, this number, this is your limit. And so this answer is 18,000. That is where the horizontal asymptote would be. What's the range of the solution curve? Well, we started with 4,000. That's how many fish that we have. And then we started increasing. And then we got this horizontal asymptote of 18,000. So we had 4,000. And in this model, we'll, we'll actually never reach that asymptote. So that's our range. So let's take a look at when the solution curve is increasing or decreasing. Um, what do we get if we plug any number between 4,000 to 18,000 into dp dt? Well, this first factor will always be positive, and since my population numbers range from 4,000 up to 18,000 and never quite get there, this second factor is also going to be positive. So we're going to say that p is increasing because dp dt is positive. All right, now what about concave up and concave down? This is where we're going to do some, um, we're going to check where that inflection point is. So I'm going to take the derivative of dp dt to get my second derivative. That's, we know that that's where concavity comes from. So my second derivative is going to look like this. The derivative of 3p with respect to time is 3, but then times, because of the chain rule, dp dt. The derivative of p squared over 6,000 is 2p over 6,000, but then again, because of the chain rule, times dp dt. So let's factor out a dp dt, and we'll get dp dt times 3 minus 2p over 6,000. So this is my second derivative, and I already know that dp dt is positive here, so let's take a look at just this second factor. Let's set that equal to zero. So we would want to know when 2p over 6,000 is equal to 3. Multiply by 6,000 and divide by 2, and you're going to get that p is equal to 9,000. That's going to be, notice that that was exactly half of our population. 
So let's take a look at this second derivative and put that little magical critical point there, 9,000. And we want to find out is the second derivative positive or is it negative on this interval? And that will tell us something about the concavity for our population. So let's plug in a number bigger than 4,000 but less than 9,000, so like 5,000. If we plug 5,000, we already know that dpdt is positive, and we get 3 minus 10,000 over 6,000, which is 10,000 over 6,000 reduces to 10 over 6, which is smaller than 3. So we know that that's going to be a positive second derivative, so my solution curve is concave up. Then if we plug in a larger number, like 10,000 on this side, you get 20,000 over 6,000, which is bigger than 3. So that makes this second term negative, so I have a negative second derivative, and so I get concave down. So my concave up is for 4,000. I'll just do it like an interval like this. 4,000 to 9,000, that's going to be concave up because the second derivative is positive. And then from 9,000, there's too many parentheses there, sorry about that one. From 9,000 to 18,000, I'm going to get concave down because my second derivative is negative. Does it have an inflection point? Of course it does because we changed concavity. The second derivative, that was supposed to be a squared, d squared p over dt squared, our second derivative changed sign. Alright, so let's see if we can graph this. And My little, my little curve here is, uh, or my axes are in the middle of the word, sorry about that. But we know we start at 4,000 because that was our initial population. And we are concave up until we get to that 9,000 point. And what was the significance of that 9,000? That 9,000 is exactly half of our limit. At that point, we're going to switch to concave down and then head out towards that asymptote. All right, so we're going to take a look at what happens if our initial conditions um, are changed. Here I've got an initial population of 10,000, which was larger than what we had before, 4,000. On top of that, that 10,000 is bigger than this 9,000. So we're going to take a look at what this curve looks like. First of all, it does not change our limit. We are still going to have a limit of 18,000. But now we're going to be starting at 10,000. And then we're going to head up to 18,000. And for what values of p is a solution curve increasing? Well, let's take a look at our dpdt. What happens if we plug numbers bigger than 10,000 but smaller than 18,000 into dpdt? Well, we already know this first term right here is positive. And what about here? 18,000 minus a number between 10,000 and 18,000 is still going to be positive. So we are increasing the entire time, always increasing, because dpdt would be positive. All right, let's take a look at what, we, what we're asking next. What about concave up or concave down? Well, if we plug those numbers back into dpdt, or sorry, the second derivative, let's take a look at that down here. Where's our second? Here, here we go. Anything bigger than 9,000 we know is going to be concave down. That's why we did this part d here. So we're going to say that this is always concave down. Why? Because the second derivative was negative. Does this have an inflection point? No. Second derivative does not change sign. So what's this going to look like? Well, we start up here at 10,000, and we're still going to be heading towards 18,000. However, we're going to be increasing and concave down. So it's going to look like that. Now, what happens if we put too many fish in here? And this is where we have sad panda. We're still going to have a limit of 18,000. That's not going to change. However, the range is going to be decreasing from 18,000 to 20,000. I'm going to do it like an interval here. N not going to hit 18,000, but we are going to start with 20,000. So what about the values of P where the solution curve is increasing or decreasing? So let's go all the way back to dpdt. What happens if I plug in a number here larger than 18,000 but smaller than 20,000? I get a negative first derivative. And let's go ahead and answer concavity while we're looking at it too. We already know the concavity is going to be, um, well, our second derivative is going to be negative for that range, but our first derivative is also negative. And so when we multiply dpdt, 
times this other negative here, we're going to get a positive second derivative. So we're going to get decreasing and concave up. So we're decreasing. Why? Because, ah, why? Because dp dt is less than zero, but we are concave up because the second derivative would be positive. So does it have an inflection point? No. Second derivative is not change signs. So what will this look like? We start with 20,000. We head down towards 18,000. It's harder to write with than you think. Um, and we're decreasing but concave up. And so it's going to look something like that. Anyway, that's um, logistic growth and we will practice this tomorrow. I'll see you guys then.